All right, so section 8.1 is probably a bit on the long side, but hopefully not a bit on the difficult side. Uh, all of this stuff is presented in Math 092, section 8.1. So if you took Math 092 on campus, and you might have seen this. If not, um, and, you, and you hadn't seen this, shouldn't be horrible. The first six problems in the section give me a system of equations, which means two equations or three equations or multiple equations listed on top of each other. And something, a parenthetical point next to the system of equations, and it says verify that the values are solutions to the system of equations. A solution to the systems of equations is a point that makes both equations true. If I look like at the, at, at the system of equations in problem two, there are two equations given. The top equation is 4x minus 3y equals to 10. The bottom equation is 2x plus y equal to 10. Um, I say, this is extra, just help you understand. I claim that the point 5, 0 is a solution to the bottom equation. but not to the top. That being the case, it's not a solution to the system equations. So therefore, that's even spelled right. Therefore, the point five zero is not a solution to the system. Are the two equations stacked on top of each other, considered together. And I can show you that real easy. In the bottom equation, if I plug in 5 for x and 0 for y, I get 2 times 5 plus 0 equals to 10. That simplifies to 10 plus 0 equals to 10, which gives me 10 equal to 10. And just like I said, I claimed 5, 0 is a solution to the bottom equation. It is, because when I plugged 5, 0 in for 5 for x and 0 for y, I got a true statement. But if I do the same thing to the top equation, go 4 times 5 minus 3 times 0 equals to 10, I get 20 minus 0 equal to 10, which says 20 equal to 10. Therefore, 5, 0 is not a solution to the top. Therefore, 5, 0 is not a solution to the system of equations. A solution to a system of equations is a point that makes both equations true. There are lots of points that make one equation true, but not the other. There are points that make both equations false. A solution to a system of equations are the points that simultaneously make both equations true. And in problems one through six, there really isn't any algebra to do. I give you a system of equations and a point, and we're supposed to verify that the solution that I give, gave you is actually a solution just by substituting it in. So I have a top equation of 4x minus 3y equal to 10. I'm supposed to verify that 4, 2 is a solution to that equation by plugging in 2 for x, or 4 for x, and 2 for y, and making sure I get a true statement. When I do this, I get 16 minus 6 equals to 10, which gives me 10 equal to 10. The fact that 4, 2 is a solution to the top equation doesn't mean it's a solution to the system, because to be a solution to the system of equations, you have to be a solution to both equations at the same time. So I'm going to check to see that 4, 2 is also a solution to the bottom equation by plugging in 4 for x and 2 for y and simplifying. Because when I plug in 4 for x and 2 for y, in both sets of equations, I give a tr get a true statement. 4, 2 is the solution to both equations. So we say it's a solution to the system of equations. So the verifying that the given values are solutions to the system of equations, this is what the verifying is. This is 1 through 6 asks me to take the given point, plug the values in separately to each equation, and verify that you get a true statement. If you get a true statement each time, then that's a, that point is a solution to the system. There's nothing more to do for problem two than that. 
the only reason problems one through six are in existence is that in the later problems we need to be able to check our solutions to make sure that they're right and this is the strategy that we're going to use to check our solutions. So I'm going to move on to problem four which gives me two equations, one with a really unpleasant fraction and the other that's a little simpler. I'm supposed to verify that 5, 7 is a solution to this system of equations which means if for both equations I plug in 5 for x and 7 for y, then I'm supposed to get a true statement. You'd think the top one would be tough, but it's not so tough because I set the fractions to cancel. Here, both the 5s and the 7s are going to cancel. When you replace the x with 5, the 5s cancel. When you replace the y's with 7, the 7s cancel. When I do that canceling, that leaves me with 4 minus 3 equal to 1 which is 1 equals 1. So 5 to the point 5, 7 is the solution to the top equation. It's only going to be a, system, a solution to the system if it's also a solution to the bottom equation. So I'm going to plug in the bottom equation, 5 for x and 7 for y, and simplify. If I get a true statement, then 5, 7 is the solution to both the top and the bottom equation. Therefore, I've verified that 5, 7 is the solution to the system of equations because I get a true statement when I plug 5, 7 into each equation in the system. Question 6 is a system that has three equations and a point written with three numbers. And this point that I'm checking is always going to be written alphabetically. So the numbers that I'm going to check into this system of equations are 2 for x, 4 for 1, and 1 for z. I'm supposed to go to each equation, the top equation, the middle equation, and the bottom equation. and plug in 2 for x, 4 for y, and 1 for z. If this plugging those three numbers in for the letters gives me three true statements, then the point 2, 4, 1, or the order triplet, 2, 4, 1, is a solution to the systems. If any one of the three are, are false, or if all three were false, then 2, 4, 1 wouldn't be a solution to the system. So I'm going to plug in 2 for x, 4 for y, and 1 for z into each of the three equations. The top one I get 4 minus 4 plus 2 equals to 2. Here the 4's cancel and it leaves me with 2 equal to 2. So the point 2, 4, 1 is a solution to the top equation. That's not enough for it to be a solution to the system. It would also have to be a solution to the middle and the bottom. So I'm going to check the middle. Go 3 times 2 minus 4 plus 1. See if that equals to 3. This gives me 6 minus 4 plus 1 equal to 3. 6 minus 4 is 2. And that leaves me with 2 plus 1 equal to 3, which is 3 equal to 3. So 2, 4, 1 is a solution to the top equation. It's a solution to the middle equation. Now I need it to be a solution to the bottom equation. Plugging in 2 for x, 4 for y, and 1 for z. And simplifying, I get another true statement. Because when I plug the 2 for x, 4 for y, and 1 for z separately into each of the three equations, I got three different true statements. 2, 4, 1, I verify that the point 2, 4, 1, or the ordered triplet 2, 4, 1, is a solution to the system. That's not going to make it onto the test. What's going to make it onto the test are problems that ask me to solve a solution, a system of equations. And in the first problems that we have algebra to do, problems 7 through 14, I'm supposed to solve using substitution. Substitution involves replacing the letter in one equation with something that I know it to be equal to from the opposite equation. What I'm going to do in problem 8, the top equation tells me that x is equal to 2y minus 3, which allows me to go to the bottom equation and replace the x with 2y minus 3 because that's what it equals to. It allows me to take the bottom equation and rewrite it 
with 2y minus 3 in place of the x. And that has, will give me an equation that only has a y, which will give me the ability to get the y-coordinate of the solution to the system of equations. So when I do the algebra that substitution lets me do, specifically, allows me to change the x to 2y minus 3, I come up with an equation that only has a y. So I can solve that equation for y if I clear the parentheses. Combine like terms on the left side. 8y plus y is 9y. Fuck. Really? <laughs> I'm getting a fraction answer as I'm doing this in my head, which is really not really what I wanted, but it looks like it's going to happen. It's okay. I'll live with it. So doing that um, algebra, replacing the x with 2y minus 3, doing the math that's implied there, gives me an equation with a y that I need to solve. I'm going to add 12 to both sides and get 9y equals to 17. I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And this tells me where these two, the solution to this system of equations, the y coordinate is 17 over 9. A solution to a system of equations of this form needs to have both an x and a y. I've discovered the y part to be 17 over 9. I need to get the x part. The easiest way to get the x part to the system, the solution to the system, is to use the top equation and replace the y with 17 over 9. So I'm going to I did a bunch of algebra to solve for y. Now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra to solve for x. Specifically, I'm going to take the 17 over 9, which I know to be equal to y, and replace that for the y in the top equation. The math here, the 2, because it's not a fraction, I'll multiply. It's like, it's like 2 over 1. I'm going to multiply that fraction and get 34 over 9. I'm going to change the 3 to 3 over 1 because I want to make these the 34 over 9 and the 3 into a single term. And then I'm going to multiply by 9 over 9. When I do this, I get x equals 34 over 9 minus 27 over 9. When you subtract fractions, you only subtract the numerators. 34 minus 27 is 7. I claim that that's the answer to problem 8. I'm troubled because I didn't expect to get a fraction for the very first answer, so I'm going to check. Very specifically, how do I check to see my answer is right? I have two equations, x equals 2y minus 3, and I have the equation 4x plus y equal to 5. To check, I should be able to plug 7 over 9 in for x and 17 over 9 in for y into both equations. And it's only a solution if both of them comes out to be true equations. This is a nuisance to do by hand. I'm going to pull my calculator out. Hopefully you can see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go 2 times 17. I'm going to check on the left side. I'm going to go 2 and then parentheses 17 divided by 9 minus 3. That's the beginning of the left side. I get a decimal, I hit math, enter, enter, and that gives me that the right side simplifies to 7 over 9. So my answer at least checks in the top equation. Now I'm going to check it in the bottom equation by going 4 parentheses 7 divided by 9 plus 17 divided by 9. And when I do that, I get 5 equal to 5 because that point, 7 ninths for x, 17 over 9 for y, checks into the top and the bottom equation. It's a solution to the system of equations. And I've checked it, and I'm done. Didn't expect such an unpleasant solution to come up for the very first algebra problem. But fractions shouldn't be something that intimidate us because fractions are you know, a few classes back. So hopefully you're getting comfortable with those by now. All right, so hopefully 10 isn't quite so 
messy. So when I look at 10, I'd like to do it just like I did problem 9, but I that would be hard to do. Specifically, in problem 9, the top equation was solved for x, and I was able to take the top equation and substitute it into the bottom equation. In order to use the substitution method, you have to have a, an equation solved for a letter. So either the top equation can be solved for x or y or the bottom equation can be solved for x or y to use the substitution method. There isn't a right and a wrong thing to do, but there's probably an easiest thing to do. Before I could use the substitution method in problem 10, one of the equations needs, needs to be solved for x or y. I think the easiest thing to do is solve the bottom equation for y. So my first step in solving 10 is I'm going to solve the bottom equation for y. And that's just one step because the equation, if I just minus 2x from both sides, I'm going to get the bottom equation solved for y. Once you have an equation solved for a letter, you want to replace that equation into the opposite equation. So now I'm going to replace the y in the top equation, the equation I haven't used yet, with negative 2x plus 5. So I'm going to go to the top equation, which is 4x minus 3y, and in place of the y I'm going to put a parentheses, and inside that parentheses I'm going to put a negative 2x plus 5, equals to 5. So I just took this top equation, I'm using the substitution method, I'm substituting negative 2x plus 5 for the y, that's why they call it substitution. Now I'm going to solve this for x. When I solve this for x, I have a parenthesis I need to get rid of. I'm going to go minus 3 times minus 2x is positive 6x. Minus 3 times positive 5 is minus 15. So I get 4x plus 6x minus 15 equals to 5. That gives me 10x minus 15 equals to 5. Now I'm going to add 15 to both sides. That gives me 10x equals to 20. I divide both sides by 10, and I get half of my answer. Very specifically, my answer to the system of equations is going to be a point and I know the x-coordinate of that point. Now I need to do some algebra to get the y-coordinate. The easiest, and, and to get the y-coordinate, I can take this value 2 and plug it into any of the equations that I have that have an x and a y. This is the easiest equation to use to solve for y. So I'm going to solve for y. I don't have much room on the bottom of this paper, but I have this little space over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equation y equals negative 2x plus 5, and I'm going to replace the x with 2. So I'm going to go negative 2 times 2 plus 5, negative 2 times positive 2 plus 5. That's going to give me y equals negative 4 plus 5. That comes out to y equal to 1. So I claim the answer is 2, 1. I should always, when I do a system of equations, I should always check. Very specifically, I have two equations, 4x minus 3y equals to 5 and 2x plus y equals to 5. My solution is x equal to y equal to 1. For that to be a solution, I should be able to plug x equal to 2, y equal to 1 into both equations and get two true statements. In the top equation, I'd go 4 times 2 minus 3 times 1 equals to 5. That gives me a true statement. In the bottom equation, I'd go 2 times 2 plus 1, which also gives me a true statement. Because when I plug the point 2 for x, 1 for y, in separately into the top and the bottom equation, because both of them come out to be true statements, my answer 2, 1 is the correct solution to the system of equations. So anytime I solve a system of equations, it's going to give me a point, and I can always check. 12 looks to be complicated. 
the thing that makes it complicated is the top equation. I don't have to live with that complicated top equation. Anytime I'm solving a system of equations, if there's an equation that has a fraction, I can transform that equation to an equation that will keep the s s solution to the system of equations the same that doesn't have a fraction. I'm going to rework the top equation before I even try to solve this at all. What I'm going to do to the top equation is multiply it every piece in the top equation by 10. And when I do that, the first 10 cancels with the 5 and becomes a 2. I'm left with 2 times 2x, which I'm going to write as 4x. The 10 in front of the 5, or the 2, cancels the 2, leaves me with 5 times 1y. I'm going to write that as plus 5y. And the 10 times 3, I'm going to write as 30. I'm not going to use this top equation anymore, even for the checking. That we're, and there's a certain danger, because if I made a mistake between here and here, it's not going to show up. But I don't like using that equation. This equation stacked on top of the original bottom equation will produce the same solution as if I used the initial two equations, and I'm going to live with this. So what I need to do now, since I'm asked to use substitution, is pick an equation and solve it for y. I'm going to solve the bottom for y. To do that, I'm going to add y and subtract 8. So if I do that, if I minus 8 and add y to both sides, on the left side, I make my y's cancel. The 2x and the minus 8 I would write next to each other. On the right side, I made my 8's cancel, but the y's there. Now I can take this value, 2x minus 8, and replace the y in the top equation. So now I can replace or substitute the y in the equation 4x plus 5y equals 30 with 2x minus 8, because y equals to 2x minus 8, where this solution, where the systems are, um, where, where the solution to the system is. So I'm going to change this y to 2x minus 8. I'm going to go 4x plus 5 times 2x minus 8 equals 30. And I'm going to solve that for y, or for x, and that is more algebra than I can do on the bottom of this sheet. So I'm going to bring another sheet in and finish this algebra up. So this is going to give me 4x plus 10x minus 40 equals to 30. I'm going to add the 4x and the 10x and get 14x. That gives me 14x minus 40 equals to 30. I'm going to add 40 to both sides. That gives me 14x equals 70. And I'm going to divide by 14. On the left side, I don't need my calculator. But on the right side, I think 70 divided by 14 is 5. But I'm checking on my calculator, and it does come out to be 5. So I have part of my answer. When I go to write my answer down to the problem number 12, it's going to be 5 comma something. And then after the comma something, I need a y. So I'm going to solve for y. And I know that I came up with y equals 2x minus 8. And there's where I'm going to plug the x equal to 5. I'm going to go y equal to 2 times 5 minus 8, which is 10 minus 8, which is 2. I claim the answer to problem 12 is 5, 2. And let me check. And I'll. I said not to check the original because it's a nuisance, but let me check the original. I'm going to sneak my checking on this page. The original problem said 2 fifths x plus 1 half y equals to 3. And I say the answer is 5 for x and 2 for y. So that would be checking into the top equation. You could check that without a calculator, believe it or not, because both the 5s and the 2s will cancel which will leave me with 2 plus 1 equal to 3, which gives me 3 equal to 3. So it, it's the point 5, 2 is a solution to the top equation. Let me see if it's a solution to the bottom. 
the bottom is 2x minus y equals to 8. If I change the x to 5 and the y to 2, I get 2 times 5 minus 2 equals to 8. That's 10 minus 2 equals to 8. And that gives me 8 equals 8. Because when I plug 5 for x and 2 for y separately into each equation, I'm left with two true statements. 5, 2 is in fact a solution, and I've got my answer perfectly correct. Make sure none of that's off the screen. I don't think it is. Perfect. Another fraction problem. Similarly, if I'm dealing with problem 14, I don't want to deal with the fractions in the top equation. Although I can deal with the fractions in the top equations, it's probably well worth my time to go through and clear out the fractions. I'm going to multiply each term in the top equation by 21. The reason the 21 is to clear both fractions. Multiplying the first fraction by 21, the 21 cancels out the 7, turns into a 3. It leaves me with 3 times 4x, which is 12x. Second 21 cancels out the 3 and turns into a 7. It leaves me with 7 times 1y, which is plus 7y. And then 21 times 5, I believe, is 110 actually 105. So if I didn't just use my calculator to do 21 times 5, I would have written something wrong. And the second you write something wrong, everything after it's wrong. So you need to have your calculator handy unless you're really comfortable doing arithmetic in your head. Now I'm going to put this on top of the bottom equation, which is x minus y equals to 4. This is the system I'm going to solve. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to solve the bottom equation for x. Could solve the bottom for y. Could solve the top for x if I care to. But I think the easiest thing to do is to solve the bottom for x because the x doesn't have a number in front of it and it's positive. To solve the bottom for x I just add y to both sides and I get x equal to y plus 4. Now I'm going to replace the x and the top equation with y plus 4. So the top equation is 12x plus 7y equals 105. I'm going to replace that x with y plus 4, so I'm going to go 12 times y plus 4 plus 7y equals 105, and I'm going to solve for y. That'll give me half my solution. After I get the value for y, I'm going to plug that value right back into there to get my value for x. So as I go through this, I'm really left with 12y plus 48 plus 7y equals 105. 12y plus 7y is 19y, so I have 19y plus 48 equals 105. I'm going to minus 48 from both sides, so 105, really, which gives me 57. So after I minus 48 from both sides, I get 19y equals 57. I'll do 57 divided by 19. I'll divide 19 by both sides and get a 3. I suspected most of the answers weren't going to be fractions. I was surprised that that first one came out to be a fraction. I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to use this x equal to y plus 4. Since I have x equal to y plus 4, and I just came up with y equal to 3, I'm going to get x equal to 3 plus 4, or x equal to 7. My answer is going to be 7 comma 3, because my answer is going to be a point. I write the x first, then the y second, even though I've calculated the y first. should check that. So I'm going to go back to the original problems, check it, go to the top equation. The top equation was 4 sevenths times x plus 1 third times y equals to 5. And I thought that 7 and 3 were the solution. So I'm going to go 4 sevenths times 7 plus 1 third times 3. See if that equals to 5. It's going to because both the 7s and the 3s are going to cancel. So I should write that this is my checking. When I do this, I'm left with 4 plus 1 equal to 5 which is 5 equal to 5. 
in the bottom equation, I have x minus y equal to 4. I'll go 7 minus 3 equal to 4. And that'll give me 4 equal to 4. Because when I plug in 7 for x and 3 for y separately into each equation, I get two true statements. 7, 3 is the solution to the system of equations. It can happen that solutions have no solutions. Systems have no solutions. And it can happen that solution, systems have infinitely many solutions. And that's something that should be important to note. So I should make some comments because I think that's getting ready to come up right here by the way this equation looks. So if each, both letters are all letters, drop out when I am solving. If there's a false statement, like if the letters drop out and I'm left with 0 equal to 6, or 0 equal to 10, or 5 equal to 4, then there's no solution. If you're left with a true statement, so if you do, if during your algebra all the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, then there's infinitely many solutions then there are infinitely many solutions, and I have to write my answer in set builder notation. Infinite, that looks okay. Infinitely many solutions, and I use set builder notation to write my answer. So it's, it's not common, but not uncommon, that when you're trying to solve a system of equations, that on, at some point, both the x's and the y's drop out. And when that happens, you have to examine what's left. If what's left is a, a contradiction or a false statement, we're done. There's no solution. And if it's a true statement, then there's infinitely many solutions, and I have to write those in a nice way. Problem 16, I think, is the beginnings of that style of problem. In problem 16, the first thing I'm going to do is solve the top equation for x by adding 3y to both sides. That's going to give me x equal to 3y plus 7. Now I'm going to replace the x in the bottom equation with 3y plus 7. When I do that, I go 5 times 3y plus 7 minus 15y equals to 9. This gives me 15y plus 35 minus 15y equals to 9. When I go to simplify the left side, the 15y's cancel. The 35 is left on the left side. The 9 is left on the right side. Here's a situation where both all the letters drop out. At any time all the letters drop out, I look at what's left. If it's a true statement, I have more work to do. If it's a false statement, I can stop and say there's no solution. So this would be an acceptable answer. There's no, there's no value of x and y that works in both equations simultaneously. Uh, the auth, and sometimes we say this for the answer. I would live with either of these words. There is no value of, no point that works simultaneously in both equations. You can say there's no solution, or you could use a more mathematically elegant word. You can say these are inconsistent. I didn't do solving by graphing, but if I did solving by graphing, uh, these would be parallel lines. Ultimately, what we're finding when we're finding the solution of system of equations is we're finding where two lines intersect, mostly two lines intersect in a point. But sometimes two lines are parallel and they never intersect, and that's the case in problem 16 here. Nevertheless, we don't need a visual interpretation. Uh, when you're going through the algebra, if the letters drop out and you get left with a false statement, it's the best situation. You just stop and say there's no answer. The letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, there's work to do. And that's going to be the 
You know not the case here either. So 6, 18 is tricky. I need to pick an equation and solve it for a letter if I'm doing substitution. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the top equation for y. There isn't a right nor wrong thing to do here. Oh, there probably is a right nor wrong thing to do. They all, <coughs> they all aren't good. They all are going to give me fractions. Oh, well. Solving the top equation for y is going to minimize my fractions, but it's still going to give me a fraction, which is really unfortunate. I like to minimize and not work with fractions. The substitution method is not sometimes the most desired method because it forces you to live with fractions. The next method that we're going to use, called the elimination method, would be another way to solve this exact same problem that I wouldn't have to use this horrible fraction. So I solved the top equation for y. I could have solved the top equation for x. I could have solved the bottom equation for x. I could have solved the bottom equation for y. I chose to solve the top equation for y. Now I'm going to replace the y in the bottom equation with negative 3x plus 3 halves. So I'm going to go 12x plus 4 times negative 3x plus 3 halves equals to 15. I'm going to clear the parentheses. So I'm going to go 12x plus, and then 4 times negative 3x is going to be negative 12x. And then 4 times 3 halves, 4 times 3 halves is 12 halves, and 12 halves is 6. So this is going to be plus 6 equals to 15. Just like in the last problem, the letters are going to cancel because 12x plus negative 12x, those are opposites, they cancel. The letters cancel, I'm left with a false statement. If the letters cancel and I'm left with a false statement, I'm ready to write my answer. And my answer can be either that there's no solution, there's no value of x and y that will work simultaneously in both equations to make them true at the same time, or you can say these are inconsistent. There's no real way to check that like there were the beginning and problems where I just got a single point. When you get a false statement like this, the checking becomes not so easy. Well, you could check by graphing and show that they're parallel lines. Ugh, that's going to take a long time, but let me show you this real quickly. If I take the top equation, 6x plus 2y equal to 3, when I solved it for y, I got y equals negative 3x plus 3 three halves. If I do the same thing to the bottom equation, 12x plus 4y equals 15 uh, minus 12x on both sides, I get 4y equals minus 12x plus 15. Divide by 4, I get y equals negative 3x plus 15 over 4. If I graph these two equations, I can tell that there's no solutions if the graphs are parallel lines that don't meet. So if I hit my y equals, I have a stat plot on it, I better turn it off, otherwise it's going to mess me up. If I hit my y equals and do negative 3x plus 3 divided by 2 for y1, and then negative 3x plus 15 divided by 4 for y2, and then do zoom standard just to do a graph, because I don't know what window I had, and what we're finding when we're finding a solution to system of equations, we're finding where the two lines cross. These are parallel lines because they have the same slope. They never cross. And that's why there's no solution or these are inconsistent. The other problems that had solutions were actually the lines would actually cross in a point and we're finding where the two lines intersect. But we don't need our calculator to find the solution or check the solution. But there really isn't a way to check 18 other than to show that the graphs are parallel and they don't cross. Next one's worse. The letters drop out and I'm left with a true statement. That's when there's infinitely many solutions. It's equivalently unpleasant. Um, I'm going to get fractions again. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to solve the top equation for y. 
So for those of you lucky enough to take calculus, this sort of math shouldn't really humble you at this point. Fractions are going to come up in calculus. The algebra in calculus is going to get really messy. So getting a, a little bit of messy algebra now is to prepare you for your reality that's going to come up really soon if you're going on to calculus. So solving the top equation for y, it's the same top equation. I get y equals negative 3x plus 3 halves. And now I'm going to replace the y in the bottom equation with negative 3x plus 3 halves. The bottom equation said 12x so plus 4y. And in place of the y, I'm going to do negative 3x plus 3 halves, and then equals to 6. That's just taking the bottom equation, changing the y to that. Now I'll do the multiplication. I'm going to get 12x plus 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x. And then 4 times 3 halves is 12 halves, and 12 halves is 6. So I get 12x plus negative 12x plus 6 equal to 6. The 12x's cancel. The letters drop out. But unlike the last two problems, the letters drop out, and I have a true statement. This means there's infinitely many solutions, and there's a lot more work to do. The extra work that I have to do is I have to write my solution in set builder notation. So when the letters drop out or cancel, and you're left with a true statement, that means there's infinitely many solutions. And I need to do this to write my equation, or write my answer. So steps to write my answer. Create the shell. Step one, create the proper form. The proper form is this, a set bracket with a generic point x, y. So this is set builder notation. I read this as the set of all x, all points x, comma y such that. So this so mathematician would read this as the set of all points in the form x first, then y, and then that vertical line means such that. So that's the shell for all my um, solutions where the letters drop out and I get a true statement. And then two, after, oh, two, solve one of the equations for y, doesn't matter which, they both will give the same answer. And write that to the right of that line. So I'm going to pretend like I hadn't solved the top equation for y. My step two is solve one of the equations for y. I have two equations. One equation was 12x plus 4y equal to 6. Pretend that I didn't know that I solved the top equation for y, and I'm going to solve the bottom equation for y. How do I solve it for y? I minus 12x. When I minus 12x, I get 4y equals minus 12x plus 6. Divide by 4. When I do that, I get y equals negative 3x plus, and 6 over 4 is 3 halves. Remarkably, that's exactly I got what I got when I solved the top equation for y. That's not a coincidence. Anytime the letters drop out and you're left with a true statement, then if you pick the top equation or the bottom equation and solve it for y, you'll get the same thing if you solve the top equation for y, which was negative 3 half x plus 3 halves, or if you solve the bottom equation for y. There's, it's, not, it's not a coincidence. That only happens when you... When you when the letters drop out that you get a true statement. So I'm going to now write my answer in the proper form. 
My answer in the proper form is going to be this. So this is going to be the answer to problem, whatever this happens to be, problem 20. It's going to be the set of points x, y such that y equals negative 3x plus 3 halves. That's the answer that all there is to do. My debate is now to tell you oh, what you could do with this, but I think I'll just stop right there. I, I had planned on showing you how you can use that to generate solutions because there's infinitely many points that work in this system of equations, and this is a template to generate solutions, but I think I'll just stop where I was at and, and not go further in terms of um, helping you use this to generate solutions to the system of equations. This is, this is, this is as far as I want to go, I think, although there's further I could go, and if you have the desire to hear the further, come to class one day and ask me or visit me in my office and I'll sit down and, and tell you what the further you can do with this. Um, not terribly important if you're uh, an engineering type major or a math type major, then maybe understanding the, the more might be nice, but for um, most of us, it's probably not. This is far enough and that's as far as I'm gonna go. So that's the first or the first style of problems that required algebra, the substitution method. The next style of problems, are the, they're the same style of problem, but I'm asked to solve by the elimination method, and some books call this the addition method. The elimination method works well when the letters X and Y are, are lined up on top of each other. The elimination method doesn't have me solve an equation for X, nor does it have me solve an equation for Y. What the elimination method wants me to do, it wants me to add the equations together and drop out a letter. If in these equations, how they're written, if I added the equations together, I'd go 4x plus, this is a plus y there, 4x plus 2x is 6x, negative 3y plus 1y is negative 2y, 10 plus 10 is 20. That's not very useful. What the elimination method wants me to do is it wants me to tweak one or both of the equations so that when I add the two equations together, one of the letters cancel. And it comes from practice deciding which letter you want to cancel and how you need to tweak one of the original equations to make the letter cancel. And I'll try to explain my logic. First of all, when I look at these equations, it's probably not hard to cancel the x's, it's not hard to cancel the y's. Because the y's have opposite signs, they're good candidates for letter, the letter that I want to cancel, because when you add things with opposite, opposite signs, you get the potential of getting zero. What I'm going to do, since the top equation has a negative 3y, I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 3, and that's going to create a positive 3y, so that when I add the equations together, the negative 3y from the top equation and the 3y that I get by multiplying the bottom equation by 3 are going to cancel. So my goal is to cancel out the y's. By adding the equations together how they were originally given to me, the y's didn't cancel. But if I do this, if I take the bottom equation, multiply everything in the bottom equation by 3, and don't do anything to the top equation, I'll get this. Top equation is going to stay 4x minus 3y equal to 10. Multiplying 3 times 2x, I get 6x. Multiplying 3 times a positive y, I get positive 3y. And multiplying 3 times 10, I get 30. The beautiful thing about this is now if I do what I did at my initial, initially, which was counterproductive or non-productive because when I added the equations together, no letter dropped out. Now if I add the equations together, 4x plus 6x is 10x. 3y and negative 3y cancel, so I don't need to write a y term. 
10 plus 30 is 40. This gives me an equation that only has an x. When I have an equation that only has an x, it's not hard to solve it for x. It takes me one step to solve this for x. I'm going to just divide both sides by 10 and get part of my answer. So part of my answer to this problem is x equal to 4. I need to come up with the corresponding y. Unfortunately, it's not as easy to get the second letter using the elimination method it is as, as it is the substitution. What I need to do is take this value of 4 for x and plug it into any equation. I could plug it into that equation, that equation, that equation, that equation, that equation. I'm going to plug it right into that equation right there. So when I go to solve for y, I'm going to use the equation 2x plus y equal to 10, but I could have used 4x minus 3y equal to 10, could have used 6x plus 3y equal to 30. I'm going to plug in 4 for x. I'm going to go 2 times 4 plus y equal to 10. That will give me 8 plus y equal to 10. Kind of tight on room, but when I minus 2 from both sides, when I minus 8 from both sides, I'm going to get y equal to 2. I claim that the answer, the solution to this system is the 0.42. I also claim that if I would have plugged, um, if I would have plugged 4 in for this right there, if I would have taken the equation 4x minus 3y equal to 10, and if I decided to plug 4 in for this and went 4 times 4 minus 3y equals to 10, I'd go 16 minus 3y equals to 10, I'd minus 16, that would give me minus 3y equal to minus 6. I divide by minus 3, divide by minus 3. I'd still get y equal to 2. So it doesn't matter where you stick the value for x if you do correct algebra. I should check because anytime I solve a system of equations, my answer should be checkable. So the equations that I have are 4x minus 3y equal to 10, 2x plus y equal to 10. I claim that 4 comma 2 is the solution. So I should be able to plug in 4 for x and 2 for y into both equations, the original equations, rather than my modified, and get true statements. In the top equation, I get 16 minus 6 equal to 10. That gives me 10 equal to 10. In the bottom, I get 8 plus 2 equal to 10. That also gives me 10 equal to 10. Because when I plug in 4 for x and 2 for y into both equations, that I get true statements, 4, 2 is the solution. So the elimination method is a good method for when the letters, the x's and y's, are lined up on top of each other. When I look at 24, I have to pick a letter to cancel. There isn't a right and a wrong letter, but there's generally a, an efficient and an inefficient way to go about doing the elimination method. So I need to pick a letter and decide what numbers I'm going to get in front of the letters. The y's are appealing because they have opposite signs, but I don't know what to multiply 2 by to make it into a 7. So although they have opposite signs, the, the, the appeal goes away because I, I can't make a 2 into a 7. But for the x's, it's not hard to make a 2 into a 6. So I'm going to keep my top having the positive 6x, and I'm going to make my bottom have a minus 6x. And when I add the original top equation with my transformed bottom equation, that's going to force the x's to cancel, cancel out. If you're a pro at this, um, and if you remember how to do this, it wouldn't be wrong to make the top equation have a positive 14y and the bottom equation have a negative 14y. That would be the alternative that would make sense. So to drop the x's, making one, one part have a positive 6x, the other have a negative 6x makes sense. Sense. To make the y's have a positive and negative 14y would also make sense, would give you the same solution. What I'm going to do to my problem to get it solvable is I'm going to leave the top equation with that positive 6x. I'm going to leave it at 6x plus 2y equals to 26. I'm going to change the bottom equation to get that negative 6x in front of the x's so that the x's will cancel when I add them together. Multiply negative 3 times negative 2x and get negative 6x negative 3 times negative 7y and get positive 21y and negative 3 times negative tw times 24 that's calculator worthy negative 3 times 24 is negative 72 
Now I'm going to add the equations together. Just like I desired, the x's cancel out. 2y and 21y is 23y. And then 26 minus 72, or 26 plus negative 72, is negative 46. So this gives me 23y equals negative 46. I divide both sides by 23, and that I can actually do in my head. The left side, the y, the 23s cancel, I have my y. On the right side, positive divided by negative is a negative, and that's going to give me negative 2. I need to solve for x, and there isn't a wrong thing to do in terms of I need to take that y equal negative 2 and plug it into any of the equations that have an x that I care to plug it into. So I'm going to solve for x. I like my x's to be small when I'm solving for x. I'm going to use the equation 2x minus 7y equals to 24. I'm going to plug the negative 2 in for y. I'm going to go 2x minus 7 times negative 2 equals to 24. This is going to give me 2x plus 14 equals to 24. I'm going to minus 14. And when I minus 14, I get 2x equals to 10. And then I'm going to divide by 2, and that gives me x equal to 5. I claim my answer, the solution to this system of equations, is the point 5 comma negative 2. And I should check, because I can check, and it's not that hard to do. So is 5, negative 2 a solution? 5, negative 2 is a solution if in the top equation and the bottom equation, I can plug 5 for x and negative 2 for y and get a true statement. So I'll go 6 times 5 plus 2 times negative 2 equals to 26. And 2 times 5 minus 7 times negative 2 equals to 24. For this one, I get 30 plus negative 4 equals to 26. That gives me 26 equal to 26. The other one I get 10 plus 14 equals to 24, which gives me 24 equal to 24. Because it works in both equations, 5 for x and negative 2 for y, because I get a true statement in both equations and I have a solution to the system. 26 is hard. If I look at the numbers in front of the x's, I don't know what to multiply 3 by to get 4. I don't know what to multiply 4 by to get 3. So these aren't good candidates in terms of turning them into the same number. But I have an equivalently hard problem when I look at the y's. To multiply 2 by something to make it into a 5, I don't know what, how to do that without getting a fraction. Similarly, I don't know how to make a 5 and multiply it by something and turn it into a 2. 26, I need to multiply both equations by different numbers to cause a letter to cancel out. What I'm going to do, because the y's have opposite signs, I'm going to force the y's to cancel. I'm going to create a positive 10y in my top equation and a negative 10y in my bottom equation. The reason, I could, the reason I picked 10, because 10 is the least common multiple between 2 and 5, I can easily get the top equation to have a 10y by multiplying it by 5. And multiplying the bottom equation by negative 2 gives me the negative 10y. So doing that, multiplying the top equation by something in the bottom equation by something else, I can cause the y's to cancel. In the first couple problems, I only um, had to multiply one equation. That's because there was a number you can multiply one equation by to get the letters to have the same numbers with opposite signs, but that's not the case here. An alternative would be to make the top have a 12x and the bottom have a negative 12x. If you did that, that's okay. You'll get the same answer. Your algebra will look different. So what I'm going to do is multiply everything in the top equation by 5, everything in the bottom equation by 2. That's going to cause me to be able to add the equations and drop out the y. So I'm going to go 20x plus 10y equals to 15. That's multiplying everything in the top equation by 5. Bottom everything by 2, I get 6x minus 10y equals to 2. Now when I ooh, add the equations together, Assuming I did that right, 20, I get 26x equals to 17. Really horrible thing happening here. I'm getting a fraction answer. Divide both sides by 26. 
I get x is 17 over 26. Now I need to solve for y. This is going to be unpleasant. I'm going to pull out my calculator. There are slick things I can do, but it's not probably the right time to be slick. So let me solve for y. And I'm going to generate this y by my calculator. I'm going to use the top equation, 4x plus 2y equal to 3. I'm going to go 4 times 17 over 26 plus 2y equals to 3. The 4 cancels with the 26 and becomes a 2. So I'm left with 2 times 17, whoops, yeah, 17 over 13. That's going to be 34 over 13 plus 2y equals to 3. And go into lazy mode here. I'm going to solve this, and I'm going to have my calculator do the fraction work, because I don't care to do this fraction work. So I'm going to minus 34 over 3 from both sides. It's not hard for me to do this by myself. But 3 minus 34 over 3, I'll do this. 3 minus 34 divided by 3. And enter, and then math, enter, enter. So this is going to be negative 25 over 3. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. So it's the same as dividing by 2. On the left side, if I multiply 1 half, I cancel out the 2's, and I'm left with a y. On the right side, I multiply the 3 and the 2 and get negative 25 over 6. I claim that the answer is x equals 17 over 26, y equals to negative 25 over 6. And I messed up here. Oh, back up. Right here, I, I'm supposed to add 34 over 13 to both sides and 34 over 13. When I did my calculator work, I'm just going to start this over because it was wrong. All that's completely wrong because I added 34 over, subtracted 34 over 13, 3 as opposed to 13, so that's garbage. And I, when I went to my checking mode, I would have found that mistake. But I caught my mistake before my checking mode, so getting back to this, I should have been minusing 34 over 13 from both sides. should go 3 minus 34 over 13. So I, what I should have is 34 over 13 plus 2y equals to 3. Now I'm going to go minus 34 over 13 minus 34 over 13. That's going to give me 2y equals 2. And now I go 3 minus, 3 minus 34 divided by 13. And then math enter enter. That gives me 5 over 13. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 half. On the left side, 1 half times 2 cancels into a 1. I'm left with a y. On the right side, I multiply the 13 and the 2, and I get 5 over 26. So getting back to my work, my initial work gave me x equals 17 over 26. And now I have y equal 5 over 26. Especially when you get fractions, you should check because not many of my problems will have fraction answers. Surprises me to get that, so I should check. And I have room to check here, and I'm going to use all of my calculator power to check. So the two equations that I had at the beginning were 4x plus 2y equal to 3 and 3x minus 5y equal to 1. For my answer to be correct, I should be able to go 4 times 17 over 26 plus 2 times 5 over 26, and that should be 3. Similarly, I should be able to go 3 times 17 over 26 minus 5 times 5 over 26, and that should be 1. Both of these I'm going to check on my calculator, and it's so hard to make my calculator show up, but that looks good. So I go 4 parentheses 17 over 26 plus 2 parentheses 5 divided by 26. That's checking the left hand side on my calculator. When I hit enter, I get 3 and I equal to 3. So that checks in that equation. Just because it checks in the top doesn't mean it checks in the bottom. So I go to the bottom one now and go 3 parentheses 17 over 26 minus 5 parentheses 5 divided by 26. And when I do that, 
I get 1 equal to 1, so my solution is actually correct. It's a really unpleasant solution, but these things can have unpleasant fractions for your answers. The nice thing is you're allowed to use your calculator and it makes the checking in, in some sense mindless. I can check fractions really easy on my calculator because my calculator does fractions well. 28, it would be very hard to, for 28 and 30 to use the elimination method because of the initial equation that has fractions. So in problem 28, the top equation has a fraction, and I don't care to do algebra with it. I'm going to get rid of the fraction and not use the top equation in my algebra by multiplying everything in the top equation by 6. Doing that will give me 2 times 2x, which is a 4x plus 3 times 1y, which is plus 3y, equals 6 times 3, which is 18. So when I go to solve this, I'm going to use 4x plus 3y equals 18, along with the bottom equation, 2x minus 3y equals to 8. This is a really nice gift, because when I did that transformation of the top equation, it sets the elimination up method right up. Looks like I get another fraction, unfortunately. I'm going to add these equations together. 4x plus 2x is 6x. Y's cancel. 18 and 8 is 26. Divide both sides by 6. I get x equals 2, and that's going to be 13 over 3. 3 dividing by 2. So this is x equals 13 over 3. Now I need to solve for y. And there isn't a really nice equation to use. I don't like the top equation because of the fractions. I don't like the bottom equation because of the negative in front of the y. I don't mind that equation. I'm going to use that equation. I could use any equation that has both an x and a y to solve for y. And I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to go 4 times 13 over 3 plus 3y equals to 18. This 4 times 13, I always do that wrong in my head. is 52, so I get 52 over 3 plus 3y equals to 18. I'm going to minus 52 over 3 from both sides. And I'm going to do the left side, uh, or the 18 minus 52 over 3 on this calculator. I go 18 minus 52 divided by 3 equals math, enter, enter. That gives me 2 thirds. So this gives me 3y equals to two-thirds. And again, I just did that on my calculator because I didn't want to do that by hand. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by one-third. It's the same as dividing by three. On the left side, the threes are going to cancel. I'm left with my y's. On the right side, I get two-ninths. So I claim that the answer, assuming I haven't made a mistake, is x equals 13 over three y equal to 2 over 9. I don't give many fraction answers, so I should check that. And I'm going to check it right into the original problem, just in case I made a mistake on my first line. So the original equations are 2 thirds x plus 1 half y equal to 3, and 2x minus 3y equals to 8. And it's supposed to be the case that 13 over 3 works for x, so I'll go 2 thirds times 13 over 3 plus 1 half times 2 over 9 equals 3. And similarly, 2 times 13 over 3 minus 3 times 2 ninths has to be 8. Purely calculator. Put both fractions in a parentheses. So for this checking, I'm going to go parentheses. 2 divided by 3, parentheses, and then parentheses, 13 divided by 3, plus parentheses, 1 divided by 2, parentheses, 2 divided by 9. So bunches of parentheses there. I put e everything in its own parentheses. Not that you can really see that so well, but it's two, oh, 2 divided by 3 in a parentheses, next to 13 over 3 in a parentheses, plus sign, 1 half in a parentheses, 2 ninth in a parentheses. When I hit Enter, I get 3 equal to 3, so that works in that one. This one's easier to enter. I'm going to go 
2 parentheses 13 divided by 3 minus 3 parentheses 2 divided by 9. And when I hit enter, I get 8 equal to 8 because when I plug that ugly fraction into the top and the bottom equation, I got true statements. I have a real solution, and that answer that I thought was right, 13 over 3 comma 2 over 9, is in fact the right answer. Another problem with a fraction, so I need to get rid of that fraction. If I, if I don't get rid of the fraction, it's going to be insanely difficult. So I'm going to take that top equation, the 4 7th x plus one third y equals to 5 and multiply by 21 to clear my fraction. So I'm going to go times 21, times 21, times 21. This seems like a duplicate problem. Here, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to get 3 times 4x, which is 12x. Here I cancel. I'm left with 7 times 1y, which is 7y. And to the right of the equal sign, I get 105. So the equations I'm going to stack on top of each other are 12x plus 7y equals 105, the modified top equation, and x minus y equal to 4, the real bottom equation. I'm going to drop the y's out by making the top, leaving the top 7y, making that y have a seven, negative 7y. Seven so I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 7. I'm going to leave the top at 12x plus 7y equals 105. Multiply the top and get 7x minus 7y equals to 28. Add 12x and 7x and get 19x. Y's cancel. 105 plus 28 is 133. So I get 19x equals to 133. Divide both sides by 19. And then I do 133 divide it by 19, and my calculator tells me x equals to 7. I need to solve for y. Pick any of the equations that have the y. I don't really like dealing with minuses so much, but I will. I'm going to use the equation x minus y equal to 4, plug in 7 for x. Probably my nephew could do that in his head better than me. 7 minus what is 4? The answer should be 3. The algebra way to get the 3 is messy. I'm going to minus 7 from both sides. That gives me minus y equal to minus 3. And then either multiply each side by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1. And when I do that, I get y equal to 3. So the answer to this problem should be x equal to 7, y equal to 3. Again, I should check because any time I solve, especially something that starts off with a fraction, I should make sure my answer is right. So I'm going to go to the original problem before I tweaked it and plug in 7 for x. So the original problem, 4 7 x plus 1 3rd y equal to 5, along with x minus y equal to 4, supposed to be x equal to 7, y equal to 3. So it should be the case that 4 7 times 7 plus 1 3rd times 3 equals to 5. Nicely done here because the 7s and the 3s cancel. I'm left with 4 plus 1 equal to 5, which gives me 5 equal to 5. So 7, 3 works in the top equation. If I plug 7 for x and 3 for y in the bottom equation, I also get a true statement, this time 4 equal to 4, because plugging in those numbers for x and y into both equations makes both true statements, then 7, 3 that I thought was the solution really is the solution. About time for the letters to start canceling. That's going to be the case in 30, for the next few. In 32, I'm going to make the top have a negative 3x, and it will cancel with the positive 3x in the bottom. Your, all, your other choice would maybe to make the y's have 9's in front of them. So the top equation that says x minus 3y equals to 7, I'm going to multiply that by a negative 3. And it's going to change my top equation to be negative 3x plus 9y equals to negative 21. That's what I get if I multiply everything in that equation by negative 3. I'm going to leave the bottom equation 3x minus 9y equal to 4. Now I'm going to add the equations together. And good things happen in terms of on the left side, both the x's and the y's cancel. I get a 0. On the right side, positive 4 and negative 21 give me a negative 17. The letters dropped out, 
best thing that can happen when the letters drop out is if I get a false statement because I could just stop. My answer here is there's going to be no solution. Or I can say inconsistent. I'd live with either. I think when I wrote my solutions manual, I wrote inconsistent, but no solution is equivalently good. If you just wrote parallel lines don't cross, I'd live with that as well. So 32 was nice because the letters dropped out, but I was left with the false statement, so I didn't have to go write my answer in that set builder notation. Similarly, 34, some things the letters are going to drop out. In 34, I'm going to make the top have a positive 18x. The bottom already has a negative 18x, and that's going to make my x's cancel. So the top equation is 6x plus 2y equal to 3. I'm going to take that top equation, multiply it by 3. It's going to give me 18x plus 6y equals to 9. I'm going to pull off that bottom equation, which is negative 18x minus 6y equal to negative 9. When I add the equations together, letters drop out, I get a true statement. When the letters drop out, when I get a true statement, my answer is going to have the form the set of xy such that, and to the right of that xy, I need to pick one of the equations and solve it for y. So there's extra algebra to do when your letters drop out and you're left with a true statement. So I'm going to take that top equation and solve it for y. This equation, 6x plus 2y equal to 3, is easy to solve for y. I minus 6x from both sides. That gives me 2y equals minus 6x plus 3. And then divide everything by 2. I get y equals negative 3x plus 3 halves. And that's what I'm going to write next to the vertical line. It wouldn't have mattered if I took another equation and solved it for y. I would have gotten... I would have got the same answer. Checking is harder though. I don't it's hard to explain how to check this. Graphing, they would graph to be parallel line or cons line you'd, you'd graph both equations and they'd line up on top of each other. So the answer to this should be the set of all xy such that y equals -3x 3 three halves. And that would be a, an adequate way to write the answer to this. And then I just started messing up my writing there. 36 is the last problem that has two equations and two knowns, unknowns. I'll pause the video because I'm over an hour already. And then I'll do a part two for the three equations and three unknowns, which are, which are considerably messier. In problem 36, I'm going to make the top have a negative 5x. It'll do wonders with the bottom that already has a positive 5x. The top starts off with x minus 2y equals to 3. I'm going to multiply the entire top equation by negative 5. When I do that, I get negative 5x plus 10y equals to negative 15. The bottom equation already was 5x minus 10y equal to 15. When I add the equations together, I get 0 equal to 0, which means my answer needs to be written in the form, the set of all x, y, such that, and to the right of that vertical line, I need to take one of the equations and solve for y. Unfortunately, there's not a real nice one to do. I'm just going to take this and solve it for y. This equation, x minus 2y equal to 3, I'm going to solve it for y. I'm going to add 2y and minus 3 from both sides to get my y positive. On the left side, if I minus 3, I'm left with x minus 3. Add 2y, the y's cancel. On the right side, add 2y, subtract 3, I get 2y. Now I'm going to divide everything by 2. And I'm going to get x over 2, which you can write as 1 half x minus 3 halves equals to y. So next to this y, I could write exactly that, or I could write 1 half x minus 3 halves. And either this, x over 2, is the same as 1 half x, or that. And that would be a perfect answer for 36. 
Okay, so I'm going to stop the video now. Um, you should probably master the first 36 problems before going on to the next problems. So each of these problems, either I use the substitution method once or the elimination method once. In the last group of problems that have x, y's, and z's, to get the problem solved, I'll have to use the elimination method three times and probably the substitution method once or twice. So there might be as many as, as, it might be as much as four or five times the work for each one of those problems, and it's very tedious to say the least. I have a little uh, general solution strategy written up. You might want to read that or, or not. Um, it, a, after I do the problems, then going back and reading this might make, it might make sense, but just reading this now and starting the problems might not take you to the place that you want to be. But this is maybe after you've learned how to do the problems, if, if you forget, this might, might help you out. All right, so I'll pause the video, start a new video, and then I'll start with 38. You need lots of paper. You need these, these things are going to take me two sheets of paper each at least. And if you don't give yourself a lot of room and you try to crunch these problems in on one sheet of paper, then it's going to make it hard to check your work and a lot easier to make mistakes. So um, get lots of paper for one second half of this. 